well, I have a bunch of slides for the only for the 40 minutes, so I'm trying to skip uh, some of those. But uh, what I'm trying to, to give you a sort of a general understanding of um, the Japanese um, political system in the first place, and then the Japan US relationship. So the the f first part is about the Japanese politics. The I think there are many of you may have wondered why the LDP has been has been in power for many years. Uh, there are only um, there are very limited cases uh, in the post World War II history that uh, um, the LDP has been out of the power uh, in uh, particular after the. Um, integration of the Liberal Party and the Democratic Party in uh, 1955. The, the trick was that there was a legacy of uh, Chu Senkyoku, which was uh, a very uh, unique electoral system, which took place in uh, 1947 to 1993. And that is uh, 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 choosing a different, uh, uh, different candidates from the same party. So this was the sort of a, a, a general uh, description of the uh, Chusen Kyoku. Chusen Kyoku is unlike the US uh, congressional or the uh, presidential election system that you can choose uh, three to five candidates from one district. So that means that if, if there are three uh, seats, uh, three seats district, and five candidates are, uh, are standing for for the, uh, for the part uh, for the election. Then these three uh, the, these three um, candidates will get through. And uh, the even if you are uh, if you gain only twenty percent, you will still be able to uh, to be elected. And these colors uh, represent the same party. So, uh, if you want to have a majority in the uh, in the uh, in the diet, the parliament, you need to have a multiple candidate uh, standing in the one district. So that means uh, candidate A and candidate C are in the same party. Candidate B and D are in the same party. They are competing each other, even though they are in the same party. Which means that, unlike the uh, European uh, party system. The LDP, which is the which has been the, in the power, but all, uh, but it's a coalition of the uh, candidates that is standing in the same district, but compete and competing each other. So there is an internal competition among the uh, parties, and that creates the some uh, what we call the factions. <clears throat> So there is a party division and, uh, oops, uh, I think I didn't have, I, I lost the slide, but anyway. Um, so what is happening is that these, you know, three winners and among A and C, they are holding the same policy principles, but competing each other for the uh, different, you know, different interest. So, Candidate A may represent the interest of the certain uh, industry, like uh, uh, steel truck uh, truck drivers or uh, doctors, and candidate C may um, stand for the different interest, like a teacher or or or, or, uh, or office worker, etc. So, the candidate A and C has a different supporters. And if you have the very solid supporters, then you get that you know the very minimum uh, level of um, uh, uh, of the votes. So if you get the twenty percent of vote, you can win this district. So that means if you have the very solid uh, support uh, or group of support, um, that then the candidate C will have much stronger uh, uh, possibility of, uh, of winning the winning the district. That means the individual part, individual candidates will have a much stronger tie with the certain industrial uh, group or the 
uh, group of the workers or group of the uh, specific um, uh, job segments. Um, and these, this will create uh, a, a very strong connection with the particular candidate, with the particular industry. So that is, I think, uh, well, it, oh, this is creating the something called the iron triangle. For example, the uh, this is uh, Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fishery, and the LDP, the Zokugin is the uh, gin with a, a certain interest in a particular industry. So in this case, it is the uh, 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 the, uh, the diet member who has an interest in agricultural policy. And this group of the LDP uh, agriculture Zoku Gin has uh, are able to put pressure on the ministry and the ministry will have the pressure on the JA, the Japan Agriculture, that is the uh, sort of a national body of uh, regulating and uh, coordinating the agricultural policy uh, with the farmers. So the, the JA is basically the distributor of the uh, uh, funding and etc. for the farmers. And um, <clears throat> the JA is going to support the uh, Zokugin uh, who have the power to, to put pressure on the ministry. So this is the um, type of the uh, Iron Triangle where the uh, LDP politician has the power over ministry, ministry has the power over the industry, and industry have the power over um, the politicians. So this sort of an Iron Triangle made it possible for the LDP to be in power for many years. Also, there are... Um, <clears throat> So uh, the and and also the clan politics. The clan is the uh, a faction that is uh, created in uh, uh, as a as a different group within the LDP. So LDP has a collection of the clans. For example, the Prime Minister Kishida is uh, head of the Kishida clan. The former uh, Prime Minister Abe, who was uh, uh, unfortunately assassinated, but he led the Abe clan. And after his death, uh, the five different, uh, you know, uh, politicians who are the who are trying to be su succeeding the uh, Abe's position, but um, uh, none of them are are able to win the, the race. So the currently the Abe clan is uh, is is uh, is held by this uh, collective uh, leadership. Uh, the party secretary general Motegi is uh, is also the leader of the Motegi clan. So these are the kind of a uh, group of politicians who are connected through the individual candidates and the network of the industrial. Uh, a network of the supporters of the industry. So the Zokugin tend to have the uh, sort of a, a similar network of the uh, uh, individual politicians who also uh, associate with the Khans. So this, um, this uh, collection of clans made it much more stronger for the Japanese, uh, uh, well, LDP's politician to get together to win the uh, their position by um, holding the interest with the ministry and 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 uh, and the industry or particular uh, professional groups, and therefore uh, this uh, entire system created a very strong position for the LDP and created a very stable political uh, climate uh, without the uh, change of government. So um, uh, the competition among the factions or clans was the sort of a uh, substitute for the, uh, um, for, for the change of government.
so switch from Abe to Kishida is a switch from the Abe clan to Kishida clan. So those who are in the Kishida clan will have a benefit benefit of the as a winner of a um, of the clan politics. But also, in order to sustain the LDP's power, the different clans needs to be balanced. So even though the Kishida clan is the winner of the uh, uh, party politics and the prime minister is now from the Kishida clan, but the Kishida clan does not monopolize the interest. The Kishida needs to spread the interest to the other politicians in order to make them satisfied that even after the Kishida won the the, the uh, presidential or prime ministerial race, so this sort of a you know the balance between the uh, you know not to to get out of the winner takes it all system is the uh, secret of the stability of the Japanese political system, and this is one of the reason why. There are so many, so uh, frequent um, change of government or the change of the ministers under the Kishida, uh, Kishida uh, prime ministership. So, well, not only the Kishida prime ministership, all the prime ministership changes the position of the ministerial position almost every year. So Kishida did it in uh, September this year. And uh, he also did it in the September last year. So almost yearly change of the ministers. Some of them remains in a uh, heavy position. For example, Nishimura for the Ministry of, uh, as a Minister of Economy, Trade and Industry. So these um, heavyweight will remain in a, a certain position, but somehow, you know, for the political and also the, for the distributional reasons, the uh, prime minister changes the minister quite often in order to give a chances for the different clans to gain access to the ministerial position, which is considered to be the sort of a most uh, uh, beneficial of the political uh, political uh, landscape. So, um, <clears throat> so this sort of a balancing act. Is the is the key for the uh, uh, stability of the Japanese politics and this uh, distributional politics is uh, is still working very well in Japan. Another point is that uh, uh, weakness of the opposition. The opposition, uh, particularly the socialists, for many years consider that their position is not to take a power but to stop LDP to change the constitution and uh, stop, so uh, put the brake on what the LDP tried to do. So they identify themselves as the, as the uh, uh, sort of a, uh, um, barking dogs against the political power. And this is uh, sort of a, um, a normative setting in Japan that all the liberals or the uh, opposition are, are pretty much the opposition who are um, who are trying to uh, you know uh, check and it, so this is a kind of a check and balance system in Japan that the the uh, opposition party let the LDP to to take power because the you know the even the largest opposition never had uh, enough candidate to to win the majority, and the LDP, I mean there, there is a, a a very strong skepticism about the concentration of power to the certain uh, position uh, like prime ministership, so that the opposition party try to to uh, stop and uh, and prevent the concentration of power to the government however because of the change of the you know the security environment this role has changed uh, uh, gradually uh, and the 
the concentration of power to the prime minister is taking place because of the necessity of uh, giving the prime minister for much more authority to do a lot of things in order to meet the challenges of the globalization and the security challenges from China, Russia, and North Korea. So the opposition still remains to identify themselves as a break and try not to get um, uh, uh, LDP too much power. But the uh, LDP is, and LDP is also, you know, paying attention to this uh, sort of an attitude of the opposition. So often, you know, they make uh, concessions with the opposition so that, um, you know, there will be a balance uh, and make sure that the, you know, some of the idea of the opposition party will be integrated into the, uh, 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 on the government policies. And in doing that, the, the opposition remains very weak. It is uh, very difficult for the opposition to take over the power. And uh, somehow it uh, it changed because of the change of the uh, electoral system uh, in 2009 and to, to, from 2009 to 2012, the DPJ, which was the, the this is the first uh, substantial uh, change of the government in, in the history of Japan after World War II. Uh, but this, um, was the uh, this was the uh, sort of a um, uh, this was possible because of the um, of the failure of the LDP to deliver what people want. So um, so there was a certain expectation that the DPJ will be very powerful and uh, doing something different from the LDP and DPJ, the D Democratic Party of Japan wanted to change the entire political sort of a practices and, um, you know, change the, the structure of the relationship between the politics, industry, and the ministry. But none of them was successful, and uh, people were disappointed. So ever since 2012, the opposition party are now being, you know, uh, fragmented, the opposition are no longer powerful enough to challenge the the power of LDP, and the LDP's reign still remains uh, very strong. So um, uh, this uh, the legacy of Chu Senkyoku system still remains today. There is a very strong uh, relationship between the party politician, LDP politician, ministry, and the industry. But the, this, even the, uh, the legacy remains, but the system has changed from Chu Senkyoku to Shou Senkyoku, which is the first past four system, which means the one candidate win from one district. So uh, the faction or clan polit political uh, system uh, does not apply as it before because there are no um, multiple candidates passing through the uh, one district, but still, uh, um, the, the so the party line, the the LDP party line has been much stronger and uh, made it different. You know, make make a, a much more a significant role in the people's choice for the uh, for for choosing the electoral uh, uh, electoral candidates <clears throat> but still uh, there are um, different uh, uh, different uh, well this this makes a different uh, uh, political practice but still the faction remains and the uh, the party politics is still, the LDP party politics still based on the balancing balancing act between the clans. Uh, I think one of the big differences is the, uh, is the separation of the politician and the industry because of this um, closeness or the close support uh, from the industry to the politician often being considered as a, as a source of the corruption. 
And in order to avoid the corrupting uh, uh, this uh, uh, cor corruption mechanism, uh, the there is a very strict uh, law introduced to uh, to uh, to limit the uh, to the contribution uh, from the uh, private industry to to the politician. So unlike the uh, uh, American system, the super PAC or the you know political active uh, activity committee. Uh, Japanese politicians are pretty much uh, separated from the, the direct contribution of the industry to the uh, politician. And because of the change of the electoral system from the Chusenkyoku to Shosenkyoku, there is no need for the politician to, uh, to hang around with the same uh, solid uh, uh, industrial support. The politician who has to get the 50% of the vote from the one district because it's a first pass post system, only one candidate wins the um, wins the electoral uh, district. So um, this uh, make it more difficult for the politician to have a to gain that it is a supporter of certain industry like a truck driver or a taxi driver or or farmers or what they said. So basically what happened is that, uh, you know, politicians are more becoming more open and communicating with the public and, and uh, you know, getting the sort of uh, um, independent voters to, to vote for them. Um, however, again, as I said, because of the uh, experiment in uh, 2009 to 2012 has made it disappointed. So still the uh, current system remains as the dominant, uh, well, the currently the LDP still remains as a dominant uh, uh, dominant party. So that's the sort of a general background of the Japanese domestic politics. And uh, probably this will give the, well, <clears throat> this will give you the sort of general idea of wh what kind of uh, politics political climate that uh, that exists in Japan. So the second part uh, in the remaining 20 minutes, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, Japan and US relationship. So basically the Japan and US relationship is very um, stable. And uh, now um, uh, the Japan is uh, perhaps one of the most important uh, strategic partner to United States. And uh, this is a very um, interesting uh, case that, uh, you know, uh, uh, because of the stability of a political system in Japan, <clears throat> uh, created the, uh, well, contributed to the stability of the Japan-US relationship. Change of prime ministers or change of leaders have not changed the, um, uh, relationship with the uh, United States. Even in uh, 2009 to 2012, the DPJ government, the initial uh, position of the DPJ was rather anti-United States or rather anti-US-Japan alliance. So the, the first prime minister of DPJ, uh, Mr. Hatoyama, who had, uh, uh, who had proposed to uh, to move the U.S. bases in Okinawa from uh, to the some other places in uh, in the mainland Japan, and which created a huge confusion uh, among the uh, among the Okinawans as well as in the Jap you know among the Japanese pol uh, political um, system, and uh, ever since the Okinawan people uh, expected that. The moving the U.S. bases out of Okinawa is possible. In fact, it is not uh, possible, or at least it is uh, the what Hatoyama made. Uh, I mean, the Hatoyama's comment was uh, based on the no uh, uh, no expectation that um, uh, and the the U.S. bases will be. Um, will be, and uh, the, uh, 
so there, there was a, a very sort of a wrong uh, prediction of, or hope for the Okinawans that it is possible, but in fact, um, uh, Hatoyama, Hatoyama's statement was uh, pretty much uh, based on no no evidences or no no alternatives. So this differences of perception created a huge confusion, and even today, the uh, Okinawa and the and the central government is still uh, on uh, you know in conflict of the of the uh, of the uh, newly built the uh, U.S. Marine base in uh, Henoko uh, um, Henoko shore. But anyway, um, uh, so apart from that, the U.S.-Japan uh, alliance has been pretty stable. And uh, Japan has been and is uh, a junior partner to the United States, uh, largely due to the uh, self-imposed constraint based on the Constitution, Article 9, and also uh, multiple um, regulations, self-imposed regulations for the uh, Japan's military activities in the in the region. So, uh, for all through the uh, last eighty years, uh, Japan has been the junior partner to the United States. However, this is uh, slightly changing uh, due to the various uh, factors. One, uh, because of the emergence of China as the uh, strategic rival. So Japan has a front line. Um, Japan is in a front line position for especially the Taiwan contingency. So Japan needs to be prepared for something happen in Taiwan. And then Japan needs to A, protect itself and also needs to act on its own to uh, to make, um, make a certain differences for the activities of uh, of china or to uh, to 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 uh, to change the calculation of china but also it is because of the change of united states the nature of united states um, during the cold war as a leader of the free world is now changing i mean especially after the uh, president trump declaration of the america first has made it uh, very anxious to Japan that uh, the United States may not be uh, um, committed to the um, to the protection of Japan or the uh, main maintenance of the uh, regional stability in this uh, East Asia region. So the uh, this idea of America first is uh, making Japan to think of the alternative to the US uh, alliance so that uh, currently the united uh, japan is uh, working together with the uk and italy for developing the jet fighter this is the first time that japan is uh, internationally uh, japan is engaged in the international collaborate uh, collaboration of the uh, weapon system development and also Japan is now uh, making a, a deeper uh, sort of a quasi alliance system with the uh, uh, with the Australia. And so Japan is seeking a sort of a multiple partners. Uh, 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 and uh, I think this is a change from the from the past uh, where Japan heavily dependent on the United States and the United States alone. The, um, the also, I think the Japan-U.S. relationship is very, um, uh, very much uh, stable because of the Japan's limited investment in uh, in defense, that created a sort of a, a imbalance between the United States and Japan, and the and that makes. Uh, United States committed to the uh, Japan's defense and also involvement in the East Asia region. But uh, as, again, as I said, be, because of the uh, America first idea, uh, Japan is now uh, considering to double the defense budget and increasing the def defense spending. So uh, the situation is slightly changing to adjust to the new situation, but 
even so, the U.S. commitment to Japan is still strong uh, because of the uh, strategic rivalry between the United States and China. Even uh, the Japan-U.S. alliance has been very stable. There were, uh, you know, a lot of bumpy uh, uh, relationship in in the economies. Um, perhaps uh, the, the ex my explanation about the Iron Triangle made it very difficult for the U.S. to penetrate into the Japanese, uh, in, you know, Japanese market. And uh, also the very strong bureaucratic regulation on the industry uh, within the framework of the Iron Triangle made it very difficult for the American investors to, um, to get into the uh, Japanese industry. However, the, uh, there is a, a big strong uh, change of the, uh, the system because of the globalization. The deregulation it has been one of the name of the game, and uh, also uh, because of the change of the political system from the Chusen Kyoku to Shosen Kyoku, uh, it made it uh, easier for the uh, industry to be more uh, open from the political constraints. And also because of the uh, globalization, the Japanese industry also become globalized. So the national iron triangle is no longer be very effective. And furthermore, I think the US economic structure has changed. During 1980s, the US is still the main manufacturing country. The automobile workers were concentrated in Detroit and the North, you know, Midwest uh, uh, industrial region. But these factories are now eroding to uh, different countries in Mexico, in Canada, in China, and uh, you know the, the, these uh, this industrialized region is now called Rust Belt region, which means that um, there is no longer the factories and factories are no longer working. And the investment has been moved away from the uh, U.S. manufacturing because of the uh, because of the um, very uh, high cost of production, and uh, United States industry and uh, economic structure focuses more on the uh, more on the service industry, IT, for example, the GAFA. The these are the you know the the main uh, these are the main uh, industrial. Uh, center of the, the, the US economy, and no longer the manufacturing is the, is the key. Um, although the current Biden administration is trying to bring back the manufacturing in the United States, but um, I think this is largely because the, you know, um, the transition of this um, um, the manufacturing industry was so heavy so that um, uh, uh, the many factory workers lost their jobs. And uh, well, perhaps, uh, as you may know, the currently there are a number of, uh, uh, you know, the union workers are now working, you know, uh, 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 striking in, uh, in Detroit um, to, to, to demand the, 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 the pay you know, wage raise, but, um, uh, you know, the, these kind of things are now changing the nature of the Japan-U.S. relationship. The Japan-U.S. relationship is now shifting, and perhaps uh, the next speaker will talk about the supply chain issue. But I think this Japan and the United States are now working together to uh, strengthen the uh, resilience of the supply chain with vis-a-vis uh, -vis China. Um, because the um, you know the Chinese economic coercion has made it uh, very diff you know push um, Japanese and the U.S. industry in a very difficult position because the Chinese use of the economic uh, economy as a weapon uh, it, you know makes it uh, you know um, economy economic interdependence as the as the risk for the international relations. So, uh, for example, in 2010, you know, uh, when the 
uh, Chinese fishing boat has collided with the Japanese Coast Guard vessel. And uh, when the Japanese Coast Guard has arrested the captain of the, the fishing boat, the China has, uh, has, has stopped the export of rare earth mineral to Japan. And that was this uh, uh, one form of the uh, one form of the economic coercion using the economy as a weapon and to change the course of behavior of uh, of the Japanese government and in fact that was during the DPJ government and DPJ has given up the the sovereign rights and then released the um, uh, captain of the ship so um so basically, this sort of uh, you know economic coercion is uh, is exercised in the context of the bilateral or multilateral environment, and uh, and in order to avoid such uh, coercive measures, um, Japan needs to be more independent and autonomous from the supply chain, from particularly from China and try to uh, improve the resilience of the supply chain. So uh, Japan and the United States are now being the economic allies for strengthening the economic security. Um, so um, this is the uh, a text of the pacifist constitution and perhaps many of you are are very familiar with the Japanese constitution, which is very based on a pacifism. Um, and that is, of course, uh, that is the basis of, for the demand for the Japan to be uh, in alliance with the United States, but also that is uh, hindering the certain commitment of the Jap you know, the Japanese military to work with the US military forces. And what is interesting is that uh, perhaps in the, in the text of this uh, preamble, um, uh, this is uh, to say that we are determined to preserve our security and existence, trusting the, in the justice and faith of the peace-loving people of the world. We desire to occupy the honorable, uh, on, honored place in the international society, striving for the preservation of the peace and the punishment of the tyranny and slavery, opposition and intolerance for all time from the earth. So the key sentence here is that trusting in the justice and the faith of the peace-loving peoples of the world. So Japanese constitution is based on the assumption that the world is a peaceful place and there are only peace loving people in the world. Okay, so, so for many years, the Japanese opposition parties demanded to protect the, the constitution, particularly the article nine and the remain Japan not to be militarized again is because the world is full of peace-loving nations. And in fact, during the Cold War, there were a very limited number of war taking place. Some of them are, you know, uh, uh, like Vietnam War, the Iraq War. You know, these are the most of the cases the US involved uh, warfare. And so for the opposition party, uh, the US are the ones who doesn't love peace. And the Japan also wasn't the peace-loving nation from the experience of the 80 years ago. So Japan and from the opposition, Japan and the US are the two major peace-destroying nations. And, uh, and that was the sort of an assumption of the protection of the constitution. However, the problem is that the Russian invasion in Ukraine, the Russian invasion in Ukraine realized that there is somebody who doesn't love peace other than the United States or Japan. And there are cases that the war takes place uh, for the imperial ambition or the, uh, for, for the benefit of the one 
dictator's um, uh, uh, demand. So the liberals or the opposition party are now in the lost because you know they uh, they their their policy or their image of security is based on this assumption that the world is based on the peace loving people and the United States and Japan are the bad guys. But now Russia is a bad guy and Japan and the United States are trying to punish Russia. And this is creating a, some sort of a very interesting confusion in Japan that, you know, some of these opposition, excuse me, uh, opposition party is now trying to protect or to defend the uh, uh, position of the Vladimir Putin and saying that it is the United States which created the opportunity for the Ukraine to attack on Russia, and therefore the Russia is, uh, you know, uh, uh, Russia is waging a war because of the self-defense or whatever. So these are basically fictional uh, understanding, but because of their ideological understanding that the world is based on the peaceful, peace-loving nations, it is unacceptable for them that you know, the Putin is not the peace-loving per person. And, and uh, that is creating the sort of a very uh, ideological confusion in Japan. And that is encouraging Japan to take a different, I mean, the different uh, steps in the recent days about, you know, the last year, December, December last year, the Japan has established the uh, new national security strategy. The Prime Minister Kishida is committed to doubling the uh, defense spending. And none of the opposition says no to that because they are now confused because the China, Russia, North Korea, you know, these are the non peace loving nations. And we need to do something. But protecting the constitution is not the way to protect Japan. And people now realize that it is now the time to change the a way of thinking and how to deal with the pacifist constitution. So this is the the this is an explanation of the current dynamics of the Japanese security policy. So uh, perhaps uh, so, um, and. Uh, here because um, uh, I've already spoken too much, but uh, again, the peace and security legislation in the uh, sort of one step further for the Japanese uh, position and uh, in the context of the U.S. China, uh, U.S. China rivalry, and make the United States to um, to work much closer with Japan uh, because of these changes of the Japanese security policy. So I'll stop here. Thank you very much. And I'm looking forward for your questions.